want to speak because I didn't trust myself to get the words out. I told my wife, a woman I'm raising four boys with, I didn't think I could do this. I've listened to the tapes. How can I talk about this? I can barely re read this without feeling like the ground is disappearing beneath my feet. But Trayvon Martin's parents are getting up and fighting every day, even though their son is gone. Their son has become a symbol of racial inequality that has unified people across this country and determination to see this, his murderer punished and his life avenged. There is no worse burden to bear than what has been put on those parents. But the death of Trayvon is ours to bear as well. Our responsibility lies in making sure that his story is told as it should be told. Can y'all hear me? Yes! That truth silences out the lies that, battle, that are battling their way to the top so we can't forget Trayvon, like we have forgotten so many before. As friends of the murderer step forward to talk about what a good person he is, as pundits speculate that maybe Trayvon shouldn't have worn that hoodie, and while people comment that he should have just told the stranger who stalked and attacked him where he was going, it is our job to make sure that the narrative is not skewed by this prejudiced perspective. Yeah. Trayvon was not murdered because he wore a hoodie. Trayvon Martin was not murdered because he acted suspicious. Trayvon Martin was not murdered because he didn't answer questions. Trayvon was killed because he was black. He was killed because in America, the mere presence of blackness is enough to rouse suspicion, fear, and hatred in our fellow Americans. Trayvon was murdered by George Zimmerman, but this is still a case of police brutality. Police have brutalized Trayvon's dignity and his family from the moment they arrived on the scene, saw a black boy, and made a presumption about the value of his life. Yeah. There is no explanation for failing to make an arrest when someone has been killed. Police officers do not act as judge and jurors. These officers did. When they failed to notify Trayvon's family, when they tracked Trayvon Martin into the morgue as a John Doe, when they failed to do even the most basic of investigations with evidence in hand, leaving it all up to Trayvon's family, they became complicit. Yeah. They did not drug test the murderer, but they drug, trusted, they drug tested Trayvon. We still don't know the amount of evidence that has been lost forever because of their criminal acts. This cannot be about arresting George Zimmerman alone. The police must be held accountable for the crimes they have committed against this boy. And just as Zimmerman and the police must be accountable, we must hold one another accountable for the culture that contributed to this boy's death. The stereotyping of young black men as something to be feared and killed did not pop up overnight. It has been ingrained in the subconscious for decades and will take even longer to destroy. We have to fight systematic poverty so children can go to school where they even have a chance to receive a good education. We have to stop using words like thug and ghetto when we mean black. We have to complain when the only black person in a book or a movie is a drug dealer, a mugger, or a rapist. We must fight this form of violence from all angles, and by we I mean Americans. All Americans contribute to the culture that deemed Trayvon a th threat, even before he stepped out the door to buy his Skittles and iced tea. That's why it doesn't matter if Zimmerman is Latino. Just like it didn't matter in 1991 when a 15-year-old Latasha Harlins was shot at point-blank range in the back of the head by a Korean store owner. The two dollars she intended to use to pay for the orange juice clutched in her hands as she died. Both of these children were killed because black people are seen as a threat. Both of these children were murdered by a non-white person but denied justice by police and a legal system entrenched in racism. It is hard to read about Trayvon, Trayvon Martin because I can so easily imagine him as one of as one of my sons. All these things we know about him make him feel like mine. Good grades, loved his family, rolled horses, baked cookies, played sports. But even if he had a record, even if he cussed his Zimmerman, 
or if he got in trouble at school, it wouldn't matter. There was no excuse for what happened to Trayvon Martin, or Latasha Harlins, or Oscar Grant, or Sean Bell. See, Trayvon's murder was a young, another young black woman, 22-year-old Rekia Boyd, has been shot and killed by an off-duty officer in Chicago for the crime of standing beside someone they thought had a gun. She was unarmed. She was killed by a gunshot to the head. Trayvon Martin was racially profiled, stalked, and murdered, and the police failed to make an arrest. This is not an isolated incident. Since we arrived in this country, black people have been perceived as a threat and murdered while police stand by and do nothing. We cannot stop with Zimmerman and the police. We must demand the same for every boy and girl, woman and man, murdered because of their race and denied justice by the police. This is the truth. There is no other truth. There is no justification. There is no maybe. A horrible crime was committed and as we speak, the murderer and the police who covered his tracks walk free. We have to keep marching and speaking and fighting until the people who deny this truth have no choice but to accept it. Thank you.